Uh, dear Jean-Paul, uh, Jean we, we are glad that you are here now with, with us. And unfortunately, as I understood, in Western Europe, uh, the time was changed uh, within, uh, during this Sunday. But in Russia, some years ago, we, our government decided don't change time in winter and in uh, and in, uh, in don't 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 change time during the year and in result between Marseille and Moscow now my lab is two hours but uh, but we we spent uh, this 40 50 minutes with uh, with our friends changing exchanging by some ideas about our uh, science and thank you very much that you are now with us and I I prepared special for you uh, especially for you prepared um, uh, short speech in in French language oh. друзья я под, подготовил подготовил короткое значит вот по русски uh, I explained it in Russian for my for our colleagues я подготовил короткое по французски для Jean Paul, spécialement. Cher Jean Paul, c'est un grand honneur de vous saluer dans notre webinaire. J'ai traduit en français cette salutation avec l'aide d'un traducteur informatif. J'espère que ma prononciation est claire pour vous. Vous êtes le deuxième physicien français à participer au webinaire Climovzetilépin. Jacques Rouillet nous a déjà présenté un aperçu des travaux du programme européen Clean MHE. HME. Aujourd'hui, vous allez parler de vos expériences dans une section très importante de la synthèse à froid, la production, la production directe d'électricité. C'est que ce qui est très important pour nous, c'est ce qui est très important pour nous, ce qui se soigne vos propres expériences. Peut-être que nous ne pouvons pas répondre définitivement à la question aujourd'hui. Est-ce l'effet Gordon Whitehouse, la conversion de l'énergie de fusion froide en électricité, ou est-ce un type de d'effet Zébec? Dans tous les cas, l'étude de l'effet Gordon Whitehouse est un progrès dans la compréhension de la physique. Notre public est principalement russophone. Je vous donne maintenant dire quelques mots sur le sujet de votre rapport en russe. Ensuite, je vous donne le mot en anglais. I believe that you understand my, my, my poor, poor, poor. My poor French. Your French were excellent, you know. You speak very good French. Very good. <laughs> Impressive, you know. Very good accent. Jean-Paul, I, 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 I translate for, 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 for our friends uh, my speech in, in, yeah. in, 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 in Francais. I, I learned, I learned, Fra I learned Fra French in, in school. Oh. And my, my, my pronunciation more or less good, I believe, but I, I, I no experience, I, I, I can't to speak, but pronunciation may be, may be more or less understandable. Okay. Друзья, я переведу, значит, дорогой Жан-Поль, для меня большая честь приветствовать вас на нашем вебинаре. Я перевел это приветствие на французский язык с помощью компьютерного переводчика. переводчика. Надеюсь, что мое произношение понятно вам. Вы второй французский физик, принимающий участие в вебинаре Каримова Зателепина. Жак Руе выступал у нас с обзором работ по европейской программе Clean HME. Вы сегодня расскажете о своих экспериментах в очень важном разделе холодного синтеза «Прямая генерация электроэнергии». Для нас очень важно то, что это ваши собственные эксперименты. Возможно, мы сегодня не сможем окончательно ответить на вопрос «Эффект Уайтхауза – это преобразование энергии холодного синтеза в электричество или это один из видов эффекта Зейбека?» В любом случае, изучение эффекта Гордона Уайтхауза – движение вперед в понимании физики. 
Друзья, я даю слово Бебериану. Жан-Поль, now I, uh, I give you permission to, 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 to show presentation and turn your screen, please, and you may, uh, you may go ahead. Okay, you can see my screen now. Yes, we see your screen. We see your screen. Жан-Поль, uh, my, my friends asked me every time to, to ask for, present, uh, for, uh, for, uh, for, for example, for you to, gi to, to give your presentation slow and clear, slow and clear. Okay. It's my position. Okay. okay. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Um, okay, first of all, thank you very much for this invitation. It was very good. I have, a, I have many good uh, Russian friends and I'm very happy to talk to them now directly. And uh, so we can share things together. It's a good opportunity. So I am first, I'm very sorry to be late. You know, I completely mixed up about the hours. So this is my fault, but um, okay. So I think, um, I hope you will enjoy this talk anyway. Um, I have been working, my, back, I am, my background is surface science. I was studying for many years the surface of materials using low energy electron diffraction, OJ spectroscopy and, the, and also scanning tunneling microscopy. And um, since 1993, I started working on cold fusion. I was interested in cold fusion from 1989, but I am not an electrochemist, so I didn't know how to do experiments in electrochemistry. So I started in, um, in 1993 with um, solid state electrolytes. I'm not go uh, going to talk about that today, but I just to mention you that uh, that's been maybe 28 years now that I've been doing research in cold fusion. What happened, so I have now, I'm retired from the university and I'm very lucky because I have my own laboratory at home. So I can do research 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So it's very good. So I, I can enjoy research all the time. And um, I do a lot of ex different types of experiments in uh, mainly now in gas loading because gas loading is very interesting because you can work at high temperatures and for future trans transformation of heat into electricity, it's good to work at high pressure, at high temperature. Anyway, um, now today I want to talk to you about something completely different, the direct electrical power generation. And um, this is obviously very important because if you can directly produce electricity, it's much better than going to heat and then electricity. A few months ago, uh, an American scientist called Frank Gordon sent me an email telling me that he has produced electricity with a palladium film on a rod, metal rod, in hydrogen. Basically, what he was doing, he was putting, depositing palladium onto, on a tube on, a, on the outer su surface of a tube. And then you have the second tube and the two tubes are isolated one from the other. So there's no contact between, no electrical contact between them. When he put hydrogen in it, he observes a voltage and a current without anything. There's no contact. So he doesn't understand what's happening. So he said, I need someone to duplicate my experiment to check and to make sure that um, I am not mistaken, it is correct. So I said, yes, I can do the experiment. I have the equipment to do that. So I will talk to you about my, my own research about this sub very, very interesting subject, which is absolutely new. Nobody has ever worked on that before. Okay, let, let me go to the next slide. Okay, I will, after this introduction, I will show you my experimental setup the experiments with palladium. Some try, I'm trying with iron, but I'm not very successful. Maybe some people here in this group will help me out to do that. And I will give you a conclusion. So the introduction, 
that is about I was telling you about Frank Gordon. He was working with Harper Whitehouse. He called it lattice energy conversion. I don't know why it's, why it is lattice energy conversion, but anyway, there's something going on when you deposit palladium or iron on a material in hydrogen or deuterium atmospheres. Both hydrogen and deuterium have been tested. We don't see much of a difference between hydrogen and deuterium, to tell you the truth. So this is my experimental set. I have a vacuum chamber. It's a, it's a CF35 flange, and the tube is about 35 centimeter, 30 centimeter long. I can introduce hydrogen, and I, I have this is the vacuum chamber I'm using. I'll show you that first experiment. I've, the first experiment I've done is much simpler. I took a, a eight millimeter tungsten wire tube, tungsten, uh, sorry, stainless steel tube, six millimeter in diameter, I'm sorry, six millimeter. And then there was inside a two millimeter silver palladium rod. Actually, I had, a, oh, what happening there? Uh, it's going too fast by itself. I had this, um, this two millimeter palladium silver rod. So the first experiment, I used this rod without any deposition on it. And then I put hydrogen inside, but there was no excess heat whatsoever. No, no, no electricity whatsoever. It was zero. So I decided to, there was nothing happening at that time. I made a mistake. So what I did, I come back to that one. What I did, I, by electrolysis, I deposited a palladium on top of this wire, of this rod. Once I've deposited palladium on the rod, then I very suddenly when I measured, there was electricity coming out. You can see here, I've changed the, resist the, the loading resistance. I could measure the voltage and the power because I could measure current and voltage. It's in the nanowatts. I mean, it's not much. Huh? It's a few nanowatts, nan tens of nanowatts, but it is significant. It's not a, a measurement error. So what I have done instead, I've tried to use another system with larger tubes. Instead of adding, having a two millimeter tube, I took a wider diameter tube and coaxially to each other to have more surface area so that the, the voltage and the current, so that the current will increase. So now the cylinders were about 10 centimeter, 10 centimeter of length, five centimeter in diameter. The, the, what I used for the outer cylinder was made of silver, uh, the palladium deposited by electrolysis. What now that I get is a lot more voltage because that goes up to, oh, oh, I'm sorry, 734 millivolts. Then if you change the, the, resist, the loading resistor, the, the voltage decreases, but you go to, you go to a maximum power of 4.5 microwatts. Before that, we had nanowatts. Now we are in the microwatts range, so which is much better. So indicating something is happening there. I mean, um, now we have 500 millivolts. We can almost light up a LED, an LED with that almost. Um, after pumping out the hydrogen, if I pump out the hydrogen, the voltage dropped to zero. So you need the hydrogen. But when you add again the hydrogen or deuterium, the voltage increases slowly. It's very surprising. It seems that it takes time for to load the, the, the layer of palladium so that the hydrogen will go inside. I didn't see a very a difference between hydrogen and deuterium. It seems to be about the same. Now, if you plot the power versus the resistance, you see that, I mean, it's very schematic here. But there's a peak here, depending on the load. It's about 100 kilo ohm, the best, the best resistor to have the maximum power out. Now, so if I wait after pumping out the cell and I put hydrogen, so you have the curve with hydrogen and the curve with deuterium, they are very similar in terms of time the, the voltage goes up slowly, slowly. There are some variations here, but they are very much similar between hydrogen and deuterium. You cannot really compare them because, you know, um, 
I'm not sure it's very reproducible at this point yet. That's to be checked. Anyway, there is a definitely an effect of voltage being built up there. Now, what's interesting, I tried to see if there was an influence of the temperature. I used, uh, I had my kitchen oven, you know, and put it in my kitchen oven and to measure the voltage versus temperature. And you see that voltage increases at the beginning and then decreases and changes polarity because of the because of the kitchen oven i couldn't go to very high temperatures and also because of the valve and so on and so forth so maybe at low a higher temperature it's even better this is very interesting to look at why is there voltage change i don't know actually i don't understand anything in this system you know it's very strange you know everything is abnormal and i love it because that's abnormal uh, so now, some people, instead of using palladium, which is very expensive, try to use iron instead of, of um, palladium. I mean, iron can also load hydrogen. So people use iron. And I tried to deposit iron on the surface. First, I tried with uh, uh, FeCl3. Didn't work. Um, didn't work at all. Then I tried Cl3. Uh, Cl2, but you couldn't get anything good. I tried, got maximum a few millivolts, but not as good as with the palladium. So I need to, to try to improve the deposition, um, but didn't really work. You can see the detail, how it works. I mean, this is my copper. I use a copper tube and inside there was stainless steel tube and I deposit the iron on the copper tube, but it was not as good as with palladium. So this, the design, the cell gate I showed you, the cell I used later was this kind of cells because um, it's more convenient for me to have large surfaces. I can have large tubes. And I realized that the larger the, larger the surface, the more current you observe. The voltage doesn't increase too much, but the current increases with the surface, which is quite normal, actually. Um, after that, I had... Uh, I've done the experiment and they look at this black powder that came out of the device. I don't know, it is magnetic. I don't know what it is. I didn't analyze it, but somehow it's sort of iron oxide or something like that that came out of the tube after the experiment with copper, with this tube. But uh, the result was not very good in terms of voltages and currents. You see, it's, uh, surprisingly, the, the, the tube, this is a stainless steel tube. And look at the end of the tube has become etched. I'm surprised because it, it, the temperature was low. There was no reason that ha this thing happened. I have no idea what's happened there. Something happened. It's very mysterious so far. All these experiments are extremely mysterious. So what the conclusion? I mean, uh, my, my work is very preliminary and I know that uh, other people have done some more work. I want to do more work on this subject because it's extremely interesting. I think with a little bit of patience and work, we should be able to light up an LED to show that there is a power without doing anything. The way uh, Frank Gordon started working was first to, to he, he put americium first. He was looking at the ionization of the gas with a nuclear material. That's how we started the research. And if we realized that there was more electricity coming out than coming from, I'm sorry, I'm not finished yet. <laughs> um, he, well, he had found that there was more electricity coming out than the, the, the radiation from the americium he, was, he had inside the chamber. So he decided to remove the americium and he had again like, the same electricity. So something is happening, something is ionizing the gas. We don't know what. I was thinking maybe cosmic rays. So I tried putting lead around the chamber, nothing happened. So it's not the cosmic rays that are doing it. Something else is doing it. I don't know yet what's doing the effect, but maybe it's, there's some uh, field emission effect with two different types of, uh, of, <laughs> of voltage and the surfaces, you know? We don't know. We don't know that. So a lot more work. But the thing is that there's no doubt there's a, oh, sorry, okay. 
there's no doubt there's a new phenomenon that has been discovered. Palladium, iron, and hydrogen are the key elements. There may be some other thing, other materials will work. Maybe nickel will work also. I didn't try that. The electricity power varies with resistance, resistive load. The var voltage varies with temperature and seem to increase with temperature. The deposition of the metal is very critical and not well understood. We don't know how thick it should be, you know? It should be, oh, uh, what's happening? Oh, uh, this is gone. Okay, let me put that way. The, 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 um, the metal thickness, the quality of the deposit is very important. And um, we don't know what exactly what thickness we need to have. We don't know. Um, we don't know how long we should leave it on. I mean, there are many mm. parameters we don't know yet. But we know that by increasing the surface of the electrodes, we have more, more current. And if you put them in series, then you have more voltage. So my next goal is to have more voltage and more current by putting different number of cylinders in series, one inside the other, in order to increase both the current and the voltage, and possibly light up an, an LED with this voltage and show this effect is real on a, you can see it directly, you know? But a lot of questions not yet answered. So I think there's not much more we can talk about it because um, there are a lot of discussion to be made on that. And I'm very open to your questions so we can answer the question, I can answer your questions. This is, uh, I think this is accessible to many, many laboratories. You don't need a lot of equipment. You need very limited amount of materials. And um, I suggest you should try it and work on it because it is extremely important. Uh, producing directly electricity is the best for the future. So thank you very much. It was a little bit short, but um, we have the basis for a discussion. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Professor Bibirian. Друзья, ну, если есть вопросы, Пожалуйста, поднимайте руки. Вот, вот начали поднимать руки. Спасибо. И первый поднял Климов. Анатолий, твой вопрос. Джан Поль, thank you very much for the very interesting presentation. And I have a, a small question for, for you. It's well known that uh, cold fusion or maybe uh, Lennar uh, is connected uh, with the three key words, hydrogen, nanoparticles, and uh, also metal, <coughs> three. Yes. And uh, according to your presentation, uh, uh, two of these words I used, I used uh, uh, hydrogen and metal. And, and metal. But what do you think about uh, uh, how your result may be changed when we use nanoparticles uh, uh, road uh, with the nanoparticles uh, on the surface or maybe inside of this road? Uh, 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 when you change your metal, uh, continuous uh, uh, metal to the um, nanoparticles uh, structure. I, I agree with you, this is a good suggestion to deposit nanoparticles because as you told, uh, you said, nanoparticles are very important for LENR. And my, I know that uh, it works better with this nano dimensions. So I don't know how to deposit these nanoparticles of iron or palladium on my surface. But if I know, if you can tell me what to do, I will do it with, uh, gladly do it, you know? But maybe there is something nanostructures that is happening but you're right this is very important um, okay thank you yes yes it is important one more to yes еще вопросы у тебя нет нет спасибо thank you Anatoly Klimov Sash Parkhomov пожалуйста твой вопрос Jean Paul is there any evidence that low energy nuclear reactions occur in these experiments? And the second question, are very important experiments... Саш, Саш, давай, давай по очереди. Саш, давай по очереди. Один вопрос, потом второй вопрос. Вопросы очень важные. 
Yes. First question. First question. Are any evidences that cold fusion taken part in these experiments? Jean Paul. Uh, no, there's no evidence at this point because we didn't do any analysis of the of the gas and there's no analysis of the surface of the material either. So this is just an assumption because we are using palladium and hydrogen like in LENR. That's all there is, you know. <laughs> I agree with you. It's completely guess. We don't know. If maybe it's something different. Maybe it's different. We don't know that. Well, I uh, I uh, make make a comment in Russian for, be, for better understanding our auditorium. Okay. Друзья, он, Жан-Поль, работает у себя дома, он уже, значит, на пенсии ушел вот недавно из университета, поэтому его возможности, они очень ограничены. Вот. Но у него, я думаю, Саш, есть одно свидетельство, потому что дырка возникла вот во внутреннем электроде, которую при температуре 60 градусов Цельсия в металле, в палладии сделать, наверное, или в, в этой в нержавейке сделать невозможно. Саш, второй вопрос. Second question of Александр Парков. Yes. Are very important experiments with laser going on? Продолжаются ли эксперименты с лазером? Ну и continue your experiments with laser. To, to, to lighten some point, some point on and 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 see how elements existing in this point lightning by laser. The question is not on this presentation, but in your previous work. Uh, can you repeat the question? I didn't really understand. I'm sorry. The question is of Alexander Parhomov that in the past you made an experiments of lightning the uh, the surface by laser during many months and do you have new results continue this work now i have continued this work a little bit trying to find neutrons if there were any neutrons so we have put cr39 behind the sample and we found some neutrons but not too many but there were some neutrons there so maybe there are neutron formation when you you have hydrogen on this you have hydrogen and deuterium and laser yes we have measured neutrons no в общем понять сложно но вроде бы они там видят нейтроны в результате это самое в результате облучения саш есть еще вопросы нет больше нет тут я не понял ответ вообще ну он продал он он эти эксперименты продолжает и видит там нейтроны вот вот нейтронов он хотел бы померить но ничего они не померили а вот так да понятно да и next question барышников александр пожалуйста Саш, включи микрофон. Да, 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 я включил. Thank you very much for your interesting presentation. John Paul, I, I would like to ask you some three questions. First, uh, first question. Uh, you said about um, voltage, but uh, uh, did you register it? Uh, did you register it a current? And how long this current exists? I couldn't understand the question. Can you repeat it again, please? What uh, the value of the current? Did you, reg did oh. you register a current, electrical current? Yes, 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 yes. And uh, how long this current uh, exists? How long it, it was? Here it is. OK, the, what I've done, you can calculate the, the current. I have the resistor and the voltage. So it's uh, here you have. You can ah. take it here, you yes. see? Okay. And next, uh, Jean-Paul, uh, second part of this question is how long du duration oh. of this current movement in your unit? In my case, I left it for a few hours, but I know that uh, Frank Gordon left it for several weeks and he had still voltage. Let's speak about your experiments. Not I from... it a few hours, a few hours. I don't remember the number exactly. Few, 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 it's not a number. How many? 
number. Maybe five or six hours. Five, five, six or five. Five, six. five, six hours, maybe more, but I don't remember. I understand. The second question. Uh, yes. Саш, там, значит, максимальное время, которое было достигнуто, 7 недель, там что-то такое. Сколько было, да? А потом прекращался. Да. Yes, yes. Понятно. Uh, the second question. Uh, what if, uh, can you say about the uh, level of pollution? Pollution? Да, oh, hydrogen. Oh, my hydrogen? Okay. Uh, Yes. <laughs> well, I use a, a mechanical pump. So the, the power, the when I do the vac, I evac, first of all, I evacuate with a mechanical pump. So in the in the 10 minus 2, 10 minus 3 minitor, mini, um, uh, um, 10, minus, 10 minus 3 tor. And then I put hydrogen about one atmosphere to two atmosphere of hydrogen. So it's a pure hydrogen, and it's uh, but there is certainly some pollution. It's not a very clean system. It's not very. It's not you, you ultra high vacuum. It's not a very good vacuum. So there is still pro pollution in it. I'm pretty sure there is certainly some oxygen and some other gases inside the chamber. Yes, it is not pure. No, Он про уровень ничего не говорил, он просто рассказал, как он там откачивает. Он, видимо, не очень понимает, что при откачке он туда напустил кое-чего с помощью этого насоса. А во-вторых, частоту водорода, которую он использует, он тоже не контролировал. Но, Александр, спасибо, вопрос классный. И последний ваш вопрос. Вы регистрируете сам рентген в I'm sorry. Can radiation. You, do, you, do, you, do, you, do you detect radiation detect, from your yes. unit? No, I, I, I didn't see anything with a Geiger counter. No Geiger counter. I, I, don't, no, I don't have a neutron detector, so I cannot detect that. I have looked at the influence of a magnetic field. I tried to put a magnetic field on top of it to see if there was an influence. There was no influence of a magnetic field. And um, that's all I can say at this point, yeah. The only parameter I used, I looked at was temperature, uh, but no radiation. I didn't put any CR39 yet, but I probably need to do that later. Yes. In other words, he didn't measure any radiation. Any possibilities at home? Yes. Geiger was, but no. No, Geiger is clear. The question is connected with the fact that with uh, when proton uh, Alexander, we can speak in Russian, maybe you can answer the question. Well, it's a question related to the fact that when the proton capture the electron, the possibility of this happens, but it happens in a very strong way. It's not a question, it's a question. Yes, it's a question related to this. I think it's important. Thank you, thank you for the questions. Bob Grenier, put your question, please. But Bob, uh, you see that uh, our friend, uh, uh, your English should be very simple. My, 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 I ask you to, do, to put your question, please. Hi, um, thank you for the presentation, Jean-Paul. Hey, Bob. Um, uh, we, we have found uh, in two systems, a ultrasonic system and a plasma system that we are creating micron scale crenellated iron rich spheres. And in the case of this one, uh, they are FeO2, which is a three plus oxide of iron. And this was discovered in 2016 at pressures of 750,000 atmospheres and 1,800 Kelvin in a diamond anvil. But we're not, we've not got that in this, and we haven't got that in, in the other one. Now, as a result of publishing that data, someone 
pointed me to a Japanese patent from 2014. And I have copied the Japanese patent into the discussion for the common discussion for everyone here, including a tr English and French translation. Uh, and in there, um, I investigated this phenomenon. And essentially, if you have what, what this Japanese patent guy was doing was using higher order alkaline metal oxides uh, of, in, uh, of um, transition metals. So my first question is, when you are plating, what electrolyte are you using? To deposit the palladium, I use the palladium bromide, and later I use palladium chloride to deposit it. OK. Uh, so um, in both cases, you are using silver. One is a, a small percentage of silver, and the other one is a silver foil. Yes. In the, it, so in the case of silver, when I was investigating the properties of this newly discovered material, um, if you have a Fe3+, plus, it turns out it's an electron scavenger. And it actually higher order uh, transition metal oxides, particularly if they have um, alkaline metals, are also electron scavengers. And so the basis of this pattern looks to be for electron scavenging. And so what, what I might, my, my question then is, if you look into the literature, silver is an electron scavenger and it does this same process. And so I think in, in your silver and your silver palladium systems, it is the silver iron that's doing this. Now silver is um, not reversible. And so you will get power for a period of time and then it will fall off and then it'll just be residual if my hypothesis is correct. In the case of iron, which Alan Goldwater has been doing, he's been using sodium citrate to do his plating. Uh, and that is the same that Alan Smith has been using and the same that Stevenson has been using, as I understand it, because they're following the same protocol or in the same family. And when you have sodium ions as nanoparticles, on the higher order iron oxide in this case, mm -hmm. it does this electron scavenging process, which is in this 2014 patent, which you can get access to from the comments and the translation in French and English in this Zoom chat. So I, I would like you to read this uh, patent, read the translation and see if the same process is going on. Now, the interesting thing about Fe3 plus is that it's a reversible process between Fe3 plus and Fe2 plus plus Fe3. So you get an initial kick of this electron scavenging, and then it gets down to a reversible level. Now that patent actually claims that it is able to do Lena, and they have observed transmutations within this higher order uh, reaction process, a higher order iron oxide process. So unlike silver, which will reach a limit, this may be able to use the Lena process to do the reversible part to then persist in producing the electric current. So the iron oxide, iron option, option, if you look at that Japanese process and the way they he creates the nanoparticles and so forth, it may be able to produce electricity for a long period of time. And he actually cites the fact that it is um, able to um, uh, be a fuel cell. He actually cites that. So um, I, I think it's very worthless. It might be this effect. I don't know whether, I haven't looked to see if the patent was awarded, but I think we can learn a lot from that and electron scavengers in general. And I think it might be that process. I think- Bob, Bob, what you Bob, need... Bob, 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 Bob. Yeah. Uh, it's your uh, comments, it's your discussion, but <laughs> it, it's need to a uh, short question for the- so, so, so the question is, have you considered electron scavenging with respect to uh, the silver uh, in, in your palladium and your silver foil? Uh, and no, have you considered the same process in the iron variants of this system? No, okay. no. My, my answer is short. No, the okay. longer the question, the shorter the answer. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you can see the references oh, okay. that I've given. Bob, 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 Bob Grinier, once again, to give a 
presentation of some idea, and after that, put your question. Thank you both. Uh, nevertheless, uh, nevertheless, thank you very much for your question. And uh, Mikhail, uh, Mikhail Ivanov, put your question, please. Uh, dear Jean Paul, have you own uh, theoretical theoretical explanation with your results or not? Oh. Own theoretical explanation. My own theoretical explanation. I have no explanation. I am an experimentalist. I do experiments. <laughs> uh, it was very interesting to have some your uh, explanation with results. Just just a pity. Thank you very much. Well, I think maybe uh, let me have a few comments anyway. Maybe there's some kind of field emission of electrons on the surface by the difference of of the work function of the different materials that could be the explanation. But in order to check this hypothesis, it would be interesting to change the distance between the electrodes to see the effect of the distance between, between the electrodes. Is there a best distance? We don't know that yet. Uh, that has to be checked. So there are many questions I don't have because um, I was thinking about the field emission effect, but uh, I don't know anything more than that, unfortunately. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank very you very much. much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, no questions. And uh, my uh, last question, uh, uh, Jean Paul, uh, can you measure? Can you? Can you? I know that you put your questions at home. Uh, can you measure oscillation of current and uh, voltage and oscillation uh, with very high, for example, mega or giga, uh, giga, giga, uh, giga, giga, giga uh, value of frequencies? Can you measure oscillations? I'm not equipped to do that. Um, I can try. I will not try it yet, but I can try it. Yes, in the future. Why not? Mm -hmm. I can try that. I, and my oscilloscope will, know, will go only to the megahertz, not to the gigahertz. I don't have an oscilloscope that fast. But you're right. Maybe there is something to be looked at. And um, if as soon as, my, as soon as my system is running again, I might bring it to a good electron, a good oscilloscope capable of seeing that. This is a good idea. Yes, very good idea. I, I, I will say it's a good suggestion to look, look at these oscillations. That's right. That's good point. Very good point. Thank you. Thank you for your answer. And now, friends, please, uh, your comments, if you have some ideas to say something about this experiment. Very short presentation, uh, but, uh, but presentation. Could you give your comments? Klimov, Pierre, first. Uh, Jean Paul and uh, dear colleagues, uh, uh, my uh, uh, remarks, uh, my uh, suggestion for uh, the experimental results uh, obtained by uh, Jean Paul is the following. Uh, you see very small power, about microwatts. Yes. in this experiment, very small value of the uh, voltage, only less than one, one volt. Yes. It's very small value. So this, um, uh, uh, the extraction of electric, uh, electricity from this device, I think it's a very uh, bad idea is negative idea because of uh, uh, um, it's uh, uh, only after the understanding of the physics, uh, uh, physical uh, theoretical model, uh, maybe polar empirical model of these experimental results, uh, uh, we can obtain a possibility to the, create the uh, real power supply for the production of the electricity. But today, it's only maybe the diagnostic method for the uh, study details of the low energy nuclear reactions or uh, uh, nuclear physics in condensed matter. Uh, so um, 
it's maybe uh, very important results, but uh, non-sensitive uh, results for the uh, obtaining another type of the energy, for example, heat energy or uh, transmutation of the uh, elements uh, in uh, different types of the uh, uh, low energy nuclear reactions. Uh, low energy nuclear reactors, uh, uh, different types, plasma, uh, uh, using the plasma formation, using the uh, uh, ultrasonic and the heating and so, so on. Uh, so the, uh, maybe another type of energy more uh, important for the uh, possible uh, application or possible future uh, technologies uh, of uh, our researches. Mm. And it's my point of view because of uh, uh, I, uh, I listen uh, different uh, presentation on this question and uh, uh, in all presentations, the value of the uh, electrical power extraction very, very small. And uh, I think it's uh, this direction is not um, uh, is not interesting for the future development of the uh, learner technologies in future. Thank you very much for my. Uh, well, I thank you. But two things. I mean, there are two things here. One is the, the research side. Research is very important. We don't care about applications at this point. But the research is very important. If you can produce electricity without introduce, without adding anything, it's very important. Something is happening somewhere. We have to understand what it is. And to understand what it is, you need to do a lot of experiments to, to try to find out what's going on. So there's a lot of experimental work that has to be done before having a good a good model, a good theory to do to understand. Now. If once we have understood and we have a, a theory, then we can think of applications. And I agree with you, we are very far from application at this point, but we don't know. You know, the first nuclear reactor was made uh, in, in Chicago was only five watts. So after that, they made gigawatts. So you never know what will happen in the future. We don't know. We have okay, thank that. you. Thank you, Jean-Paul for your comments for, on comments of Klimov. Well, thank you to Klimov for, for his remark. Uh, and next uh, comment of uh, Jacques Ruyer. Jacques, please. Yes, thank you very much, everybody, for this very interesting meeting. Indeed, it's turning quite interesting. And thanks to Jean-Paul also for these uh, experiments, you know. Jean-Paul invited me to try to replicate these things, and I'm trying to do so with iron, you know, because it's much cheaper than uh, palladium. And indeed, it is surprising to see how easy it is, even if you make a, a coating of an electrode uh, with iron in air, you know, not even in hydrogen, in air, I get uh, I got 300 milliwatts after coating, and this uh, voltage dropped slowly during days in air. Yeah. And even five days after, I still have a few milliwatts. Millivolts. Mi uh, millivolts. Excuse me. Mi thanks, uh, Jean-Paul. Millivolts. Millivolts. And uh, okay, I am trying to do it in hydrogen soon. Uh, let's say maybe hopefully next month, <clears throat> but uh, it's quite surprising to see that hydrogen is not even necessary to get some voltage. <laughs> hydrogen is probably needed to get a continuous voltage or voltage for a long time to maintain the voltage. But even in air, you know, uh, you get something. So it's quite surprising. I agree. It's useless. We are not going to lead the world with that. But to understand what it is, why electricity is going through the gas, why it should not, because of the small voltage, it's really surprising, you know, it's really surprising. Can I add something about that? I have done some tests 
with acetone and with uh, alcohol. And both are giving voltages also, alcohol and acetone. So I imagine maybe the hydrogen of the acetone or the alcohol is doing something. I don't know, or the molecules are, I don't know. Maybe vodka molecules. as well. Maybe vodka will work too. There's alcohol in vodka, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you, thank you, uh, Jacques. Uh, 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 thank you, Jacques, for your comment, for your comment, and uh, no, 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 another uh, person who would like to say some words. And I suppose to finalize our discussion, some remark from me. Uh, first, I agree with uh, Jean Paul that the quantity of uh, effect isn't important on that uh, moment. This is answer to Anatoly Klimov about his remark, because uh, Jean Paul absolutely right about the value of electricity, of, the, of energy, not electricity, energy obtained from first nuclear reaction in Chicago in 1942 years. Uh, by uh, by Fermi and uh, I I can remind you the remark of uh, Rutherford on the beginning of 20th century when he said that uh, the uh, nuclear physics this is uh, science and nuclear process exists but in the real life in the real uh, in industry it isn't important because the this phenomena is too small in too uh, too extremely small to be important in the real life but we know that now it's one of the base of our of our civilization it's first and next more important concerning uh, particularly these experiments uh, me and my colleague Dmitry Baranov uh, made an experiment in our laboratory in Lys in Moscow several years ago, and we uh, realized that realized that between two electrodes electrodes in hydrogen atmosphere uh, exists uh, self oscillating self oscillating phenomena. If we apply constant voltage, in some cases, self-oscillating phenomena exist in this gap between two electrodes. And we published on this matter uh, the uh, paper in our Russian conference. You can find it, you can see it in uh, conference in I don't uh, I don't remember exactly maybe 24 or 25th 24th or 25th conference Russian conference on cold fusion and these oscillations can generate a phenomena on the surface of metal with so high density of energy that that it can uh, it can melt any any metal, any metal, and the density of electrical energy uh, is very high in this uh, in the surface in, in the surface of electrodes. In result of this self-oscillating, and uh, frequency of this self-oscillating is very high. Uh, Hundred we our our devices. Uh, give our opportunity to measure 100 megahertz oscillation. But my uh, calculation, theoretical cal calculation, showed that, shown that maybe this uh, value of, uh, of frequency can be reach, can reach up to 10 to the 14, 14. Uh, uh, extent uh, of value. It's very high frequencies can be. And this, uh, this unit, uh, I believe that it, time by time, time by time in this unit exists 
self-oscillating mode. This is end of my comment. Maybe somebody would like to also to like to say, but if no comments more, uh, we, we finalize our webinar and I will do in Russian if, if, uh, 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 announcement about next same next webinar. Thank you, Jean Paul. Thank you, Jacques. Thank you, Bob. And everybody, thank you. Valer, 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 можно под конец, под конец объявления буквально одну минуту. Can I uh, add something? Just one thing. Um, I I think the idea of looking at with a high frequency oscilloscope, the signal is very important idea. So as soon as my system is working again, I have access to a fast uh, oscilloscope. So we look at that current. That's a very good idea. I, I it is very easy. Any oscilloscope, any any modern oscilloscope, oscilloscope can can be used to to see these oscillations. You're absolutely right. And uh, Jean Jean Paul, uh, thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, Jean Paul, please uh, turn out your uh, screen presentation. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very thank much. You. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you again. Thank you for my invitation. Thank you. Yeah. До следующей среды. Спасибо. Всем до свидания. Всем спасибо. Спасибо. До свидания. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Bye-bye.